I'm Johnny Smith, aka Car Pervert, and this episode is all about the new Mark 8 Golf GTI. So what is the Mark 8 GTI? Well, the Mark 8 GTI is obviously based upon the Mark 8, which came out really quietly, I thought, amidst the thing we're going through. Um, and the GTI version is about to go on sale. And being a GTI, it's identifiable because it's got red lines and little trim bits everywhere and a bit of honeycomb on the front end. I'll have a walk around it in a second. And some tartan inside. But what's a little bit strange is that the outgoing car, as, as called the uh, Mark 7.5, because it was facelifted a, a few times, the, the engine is the same, pretty much. There's a couple of different tweaks to fuel pressure and uh, actuators, but it's 242 brake horsepower, which is the same as the performance pack on the last GTI. And actually amongst its peers, not very powerful. It's hard to believe that when VW considered the GTI Golf um, and brought it out in 1976, I think it was the 1975 motor show it was unveiled at, they thought they'd only sell 5,000 cars. They ended up selling several million. The GTI came out in the UK in 79, and I know that because it was the year I was born and the year that Gary Newman's hit single cars came out for some reason. That really chimes with me. What a car, what a song, very cool. Now the last kind of, I think my favorite modern GTI was the Mark V, where they stepped it up from the flabby Mark IV and they made a point of, of, of bringing, bringing themselves back to their roots. Mark VI, Mark VII, and Mark VII and a half, they feel like sort of slight evolutions, but then again, the GTI has always been an evolution of the last. It's never been a rip it up and start again kind of car. So although you've got an improvement in suspension, the, the strut front end and the multi-link rear remains the same, but the spring rating is stiffer, 5% at the front, 15% stiffer at the back. The subframes are now aluminium, which makes it three kilos lighter. And then you've got this optional adaptive damping system. And that's where they've really, I think, spent the time and the detail on the new GTI. So although the Mark 8 GTI doesn't have any more power than the Mark 7.5 when you optioned it with the performance pack, so that's 200 and 42 brake horsepower or 245 PS. This apparently, the Mark 8, is more about control. It's more about damping and control than outright power because actually on paper it has less power than all of its rivals, the Ford Focus ST, the Megane RS, the Hyundai i30N. All those cars have a lot more brake horsepower. So if it was a horsepower battle, the Mark 8 GTI loses, but the GTI has always been about the package, always. Now they have updated ever so slightly this now pretty iconic EA888 two litre turbo engine. They've changed the particulate filter and they've changed the fuel pressure and they've changed the uh, actuators to magnetic. I don't entirely understand what they mean um, but they've made the car more efficient now the engine sound is ever so slightly synthetic but it doesn't sound awful and I haven't really noticed it when you're in the GTI first thing you notice is seats are one piece for the first time secondly it is only now available as a five door, which is a bit of a shame. Thirdly, there's a lot of technology here and there's not many buttons. It's all gone very haptic and big screeny. And it has taken me about 15 minutes to find 
how to turn on the climate control, which doesn't please me too much. Leaves me wondering whether or not they've they've done, done away with a few too many buttons. But steering feels great, despite the fact the steering wheel is a little bit fatter than before, which I don't think it needed to be. Yep, you've got unmistakable GTI bits, red accents. Uh, if I go into my little haptic screen here, look, I can go into sport mode. I can also individualize this car. Now, all Mark 8 Golfs have got um, electronic locking differential, but the GTI comes as standard with a mechanical locking diff. So there's a combination of that going on, and it's also got optional um, electromagnetically adjustable damping, which I'm going to try and explore. You've got loads of display options here. I mean, like loads, G meters. You can put your fuel gauge over there. You can change your fuel gauge out for, um, uh, well, let, well, let's see, what, what do we change our fuel gauge for? All sorts, I mean, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Lap counter, gear selector, suggester. I mean, yeah. The damping in the options that I've just chosen I've just, I've been in comfort round town and I've just come out of town and gone into some back lanes on this quite muggy, warm day that's got a bit of rain here and there. But as is always the way with the GTI, I think the, the, the judgment of the ride is brilliant, really pleasing. It just feels familiar. Yes, the seats are tartan, but they're one piece now, a bit like the UP. The VW UP GTI uh, and the normal UP, I think, has one piece. It's not sure I... I like the look of them, but I know the reality of them for back passengers is not great. There's a lot of information going on here. Obviously, you've got lane keep assist and all the other technology that these cars pretty much seem to come with now. Uh, the climate control's there, if I press that, and it's bloody confusing. There's an on-off button there, which I didn't notice for a long time, because there's so many other options going on, it just bewilders you. And I think that's a mistake. But that's a Mark 8 Golf feature, not a GTI specific feature. So let's stick with the GTI. Okay, so when you look at the front of it, you've got your usual GTI red lines along here, you see, black, and chrome badge. This is new for VW uh, for this year. Um, it's either white and black or chrome and black. There's the GTI badge, of course. This is another um, typical GTI uh, feature, the honeycomb kind of grill. It's quite a big, chunky honeycomb. And then if we move around here, you can't see them very well on a day like this. So I'll see if I've got some footage of it um, in the dark, but this is like a cross um, of individual LEDs for fog lights. And then you've got these kind of ear, kind of black trim trims here. Um, I'm not sure about the sort of low brow. Look, I don't know, the Mark 8 looks like it's got a bit of a sort of sad face. What do you think? Couple of creases in the bonnet here. I mean, if we go to the side profile, Let's walk back to the side profile here. Five door only for the very first time uh, as a GTI. You've got this, the, the little GTI moniker on the back of the front, um, front wing. And the Germans have a name for that. And I've got it in my pocket. What do they call that? It's a funny name. Oh yes, the small design badge on the back of the front wing, the sort of trailing edge is called a flitzer. You've got black cell extensions that are slightly contoured there and slightly contoured at the back there. Uh, the wheels, they're okay. They're not beautiful. Um, they're not intriguing, I don't think, necessarily. They're 19s, 235, 35, 19s on the front Bridgestones. Um, the Potenzas, they are gripping very well indeed. I don't have a problem with the way they behave. Eco tip, please check the gear change indicator, which is down there. So it's always trying to be helpful, even when, have I got it in? 
yeah, I've got it in sport mode and it's still trying to tell me to be more economical. And the GTI has always been a pretty economical car given what its capabilities are. Um, and I think it still is over 40 to the gallon combined. So if you drive it carefully or you put it in eco mode, you can actually get quite a lot out of it. It's that elastic capability of a car like this. Same boot size as before. So orders for the Mark 8 GTI will begin in autumn in the UK and delivery is about a month after. Um, but the initial cars will be DSG equipped only. With the, so that's seven speed with the paddles. And although it will be pleasing and easy and useful if you use it for, I guess, you know, urban commuting and stuff, I still would, I still would have it with the, with the six speed manual. Save the three pedals, you know. If you want engagement, and that's the thing about this car, if you're going for out, out and out power, there are more powerful hot hatches out there now. There just really are. we climb in and I'll start it up you've got a sort of you've got this breathing start button down here so press that you get the cockpit and then you get the extra screen on the side here in a vision cockpit with these kind of haptic buttons down here you've got climate control modes for your GTI modes like that um, stick it in sport uh, climate which I found to be incredibly uh, complicated personally um, you've got this the haptic buttons on the top here as well for volume and for climate temperature uh, and then you you can use the steering wheel um, you can use the steering wheel buttons here to go through your different modes and their haptic kind of feedback. There's lots of haptic going on. And then uh, there's that little panel here, which is your heated front and rear screens and your lights. Down here, you've got your GTI steering wheel detail. And of course there's lots of red because it's a GTI, you know. Um, I do like these seats, headrests built into the seats with red detailing and there's honeycomb actually on the grill on the on the on the sort of fascia here smooth to the touch which is a bit similar to I suppose the honeycomb design on the um, front end. I thought Lamborghini were the ones all about the honeycomb and then here you've got the the manual shift which is um, optional uh, DSG is what it will come with initially uh, but DSG will be a cost option. Uh, down here, we've got um, an adjustable cup holder. Uh, there is no sliding tray that I can see. This is what a key looks like. Some people care about keys. It's sort of an um, asymmetric shape. But VW have made decent keys for a long time. I quite like that, actually. Some expensive cars have terrible keys. There's a cubby just here which you put your phone in, it looks like wireless charging and it keeps it from rattling about and it's all rubberized. And then out of view, almost, I'm gonna try and get my camera down here. There, you've got your USB-Cs pair of. There's no normal USBs from what I can see. And there's, but there's an old school cigarette lighter here. Bit odd. So the back end of the Golf Mark 8 GTI has revised tail lights. They've got a nice little bit of detail in here. Um, on a bright day, you might not be able to pick it up. The GTI badge is directly below the Volkswagen Roundel. 
again red because it's a GTI. The rear bumper is apparently standard, the same as all Mark 8 Golfs. However, the black detailing at the bottom that you can see, that's different. That's quite deep actually, and the tailpipes are bigger and they're further away than the previous GTI, if that's your bag. I think the back end is probably nicer, but the front end maybe isn't. That's the way I'm feeling right now. Oh, the GTI. We do like the GTI. I'm not massively taken by the way it looks on the outside. I do love the way it drives very much. It's quiet too, you know, like, um, the loudest thing is probably, apart from the induction noise, when you really snort it like this. Apart from that, it's, um, it's most probably the air conditioning if you put it on. Now they don't say it officially, but it's heavily rumoured that there will be a club sport version of this GTI, like the last version, which will probably have about 285 horsepower, 280 horsepower. So you could wait for that. Now I'm, as much as the Golf R was a really, really well put together car and effortlessly quick, it never quite lit my fire because I just don't think Golfs, fast Golfs need to be four wheel drive. I just think it's sort of unnecessary really. So as a consequence, I always preferred the GTI. If you can't remember what the previous Golf GTI looked like. It looked like this at the front, it looked like this at the back, and it looked like this at the side, and driving. Germans are so neat with their gardens. I love the, 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 the obsession with detail that the Germans have and, and sort of thoroughness and neatness. It's quite similar to Japan in that way. Despite the fact that I got it in sport mode, I'm just gonna double check I have. Yes, in sport mode. Actually, I'm gonna put it in my individual mode. Um, it's still telling me that, you know, I should come off the throttle for extra economy and things. And I, if I've got it in the sport mode, surely I don't care about that kind of thing. So there's a bit of nannying going on that I would rather not have. See, there's a Mark 7.5 GTI again. Suddenly I've gone into a village full of GTIs. I do think that's a better looking car at the front. The back of this is maybe a little bit better, not, but they're not much different actually. The back of this is not much different to the, the previous car. As I'm entering Wolfsburg, the home of Volkswagen, there are Golfs everywhere of all types. Mark 5s, Mark 6s, Mark 7s. There was a Mark 2 on someone's front lawn. We are in Golfsville. We really are. So how do I feel about the Mark 8 GTI? I feel like it's been a, an improvement for sure in suspension and cornering. It's still so satisfying to drive. The steering is weighted just right. Uh, the comfort is well judged. The steering wheel didn't need to be slightly thicker. I don't particularly like its face, but that's a Mark 8 thing over a Mark 7.5. I'm not sure about having the seats as one piece, visually great, but the reality of the practicality might be, it might be hindered. But on the whole, yeah, I like being in a GTI. I do like being in a GTI. It's a good place to be. It's a solid bet. It's a cliche thing to say, damn it, but it's true. As I'm pootling through a faux Tudor German village. Thank you ever so much for watching this episode. Um, if you're not a subscriber, why don't you subscribe? You know, you get a bit of uh, classic, you get a bit of today, and you get a bit of future car and tech. Um, if you're a Patreon, thanks so much for supporting me through Patreon. If you don't know what it is, there's a link in the description below. You get to see things or you get to hear about what I'm going to make video-wise earlier. Thank you ever so much.